this time this is so almost impromptu almost uh, meaning that we really didn't uh, decide to do this until this morning and this is the first chance we've had so I thought it's been a while since we've done a live video and I really don't have any kind of topic in mind other than just general stuff uh, if there are questions um, about uh, embroidery itself or the process or anything at all. Just ask me and if I can, I will answer it. So I'm not seeing the video yet. So let's see, I'll be patient here. Let me refresh and see if anything comes up. Oh, there it is. Okay, so let me, I'm learning how to monitor these videos as Let's see. Hey everyone. Oops. How do I turn off the turn volume? Off. Oh, okay. And I just wanted to be able to see the, the chat come up. How do I turn off the volume? There we go. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Gary. That's his professional name, Gary. And to me, when we're working together, it's baby. Because he's a baby. <laughs> anyway, so let's see i'm gonna take my time here because it's always always a delay here okay a few people have joined us and gary will oh west virginia oh the chat disappears unless i keep turning it back on so i'll just let gary read some of that to me as uh it presents itself you can take the ipad if you want just scroll Oh, okay, there it goes. Uh, let's see, the cam. Yeah, it disappears. Another, uh, it scrolls up and it, all the chat items disappear. Uh, let's see, South Carolina. It scrolls so fast, everyone. So, generally speaking, hello, everyone. Okay, so. For fun, I thought I could have a little chat with you. Um, it's been really rainy and cloudy here in Houston. And uh, actually this afternoon is the first time it hasn't rained in several days. Some of you know that uh, I'm babysitting six, not four, not five, six grand buns. And I don't mean these kind of buns. I mean bunnies. <laughs> Our granddaughters have been whisked away to the South Pacific. Their mom is stationed uh, overseas. And uh, so they could not take our youngest granddaughter, or no, not our youngest, the middle granddaughter of that family is one of our models. Um, the younger one on the uh, homepage she loves animals and she has had she had six bunnies that she has always taken good care of and never neglected them she was always outside in all kinds of weather the snow and the sleet and the rain and hot summer days and but they couldn't take the bunnies and so i promised her i would take care of them here so i've got six bunnies that i i take care of daily they did provide me with a really large roomy hutch and they can't all live together because males are territorial and they'll fight and, and all that. So, and there are two females, they've been spayed, but um, I actually, I hate to see them in a, in a cage all day. So I built portable runs. I have five runs that uh, two of them can live together so there are five runs so that they can all be separated and i give them um, some running room in the backyard we don't have a huge backyard but um the runs do allow them some you know breathing room and just some fun foraging because they love to forage and and uh, and it's cooler on the ground it's been so hot too this is the first time it 
temperatures have dipped below, you know, 85. So today the high is going to be 77, I think. And then next week it'll be back up to the 90s. But even 90 is a lot cooler than 100. It's been 100 um, a lot recently. So this is good weather for us. And uh, so anyway, um, uh, it's been too wet to let the bunnies out. And I'm hoping to let them out this afternoon if, it's, if the ground dries up enough. It's a little bit messy and, and soggy right now. So um, that's probably the biggest project I have this afternoon is just getting everything out and cleaned up and everything for them to come out. So there's my bunny chat. Um, if you're thinking of getting a bunny, now I think one bunny would be a piece of cake. It would be a cakewalk to take care of one bunny. And, um, but there's still a lot of work. Like my little granddaughter said the other day, she said, Bunnies are a lot more work than people think, <laughs> and they sure are. You don't just leave them in the cage, and they, their poop is really easy to clean because it's dry little pellets, but man, they pee. It's like they drink one little bowl of water, and they pee like two gallons. So I'm not sure how that's possible, but I think they're doing that. But uh, anyway, there's the bunny talk. That's what I do when I'm not in my studio digitizing and testing designs and um, doing all of my regular embroidery work. Um, so I've got a couple of things to show you just to uh, give you something to walk away with. Um, pardon me. Hey Gary, <laughs> can you turn down the air just a little? I think the light is just heating up this room. Thank you, babe. Um, so I wanted to show you, uh, this is really, um, um, it, uh, just very casual, so that's why I'm talking to my behind-the-scenes assistant. Um, very casual. I, it's not, I'm, if this were a formal video, it probably wouldn't be live. So, um, I wanted to show you one thing is the hair wrap towel that I, that, and this is actually a very gauzy um, uh, uh, flower sack towel. This is from Sam's. I actually love these. They're, they're just thin, but they're absorbent and, and so pliable. And so when I was doing one of my initial tests, and this one did not pass the test, but um, I just wanted to see how it would stitch on gauze so that I could, or a gauzy towel, just so I could give you feedback on that. Um, it stitched out fine. This is one of my, um, oh, this is the back. See how good the back looks? Okay. This is the front. So the gauze is a little thin, so the stitches, you know, don't have a lot of bulk underneath. But it's still stitched out nicely. And I think this was before I adjusted my satin width and uh, certain other things. That's why this is not one of my final tests. But I had wanted to see what it would be like on one of these towels. And I actually use this one a lot. Um, it's actually a little bit bigger than the um, 22 by 28 that was the final product that you see on the um, website. Um, the 22 by 28 is, um, the 28 goes left to right, this direction, so it'd be rectangular, this left to right, and the 22 would be how, how wide it is from here to here, or tall, if you're holding it like this. And so really, it just depends, what size you use depends on the length of the hair. My hair is pretty long, so the 22 inch towel is a little bit, I, I still use the other one a lot, which is the 22 inch, but um, I like this one a little better because it goes, it reaches a little longer than my hair does, so I don't have little um, ends of my hair sticking out, which is really not a big deal. Um, but it's just, it, this is a little roomier, so it, it's a little nicer to have a little bit more length on that to cover the ends of long hair. So think about that when you're making these for gifts or whatever. Um, I gave away my others that I made that were 22 by 28. I need to make more. But I did keep the gauzy one because I really, 
like this one just as well. Um, and I wanted to show you how it looks on the towel once it's stitched. So basically what I did, and let me take a look at this and see if this is as close to the edge as my other. I have my hoop here. Just so, okay, so this is one of my tests that I did where I was, what I had to do originally was, I, I was guessing that the uh, little uh, eyelet would need to be right here for twisting and tucking in. Well, it turned out that that's too high. So then I made it a little closer to the edge like this. So it's a little bit more down here. And um, it's still a little too high by the time I wrap my hair and everything. So this one, it still works. It's still fine. But the best place to put it is as close to the edge as you can. So this one is probably, let's see, oh, I would say if you were to put the hoop on, you can see how much room there is between the edge of the hoop. This is a four by four hoop. So let's kind of just glance at it. It's probably three inches. And if you count this right here, it's probably four, four and a half inches from the edge. And that's, like I said, that's a little far. And so the best position for it is to, let me hook the other side and then you can just get a real visual. Let me hoop a straight edge. This is really gauzy, so when it gets wet and dries that way, the edges all crinkle up. Let me find a straight edge. So all I really do is press and starch, or starch and press. The area that's going to be hooped not just the design stitching field but the entire area that's going to be hooped because you when you starch and press my hoops a little tight when you starch and press your fabric you want the entire area that's going to be inside the rim of the hoop to be nice and strong and stiff and and you know supported there so uh, you do want to make it uh, starch it a large enough area to cover all that because that lends it that strength that you need when you pull it taut and I've several of you have seen me um, demonstrate hooping and all that and you want to just work all the way around your fabric after it's hooped and just pull gently all the way around and do it a couple of times until it's drum taut. And you can't really keep your fabric um, from getting distorted if you haven't starched it and ironed it. Otherwise, it just kind of gets stretched and skewed, and, and it's just not it's not good for your for your fabric or your embroidery. So this is about how close. Imagine this is starched and pressed and everything. And so this is how close I got to the edge of the hoop. Let's see if you can see that. And um, my video that I'm watching is a little bit behind me. So um, it's just enough to clear and so I can pull gently all the way around. And it's really just the hem that clears the edge. And then your design just stitches right in the middle. That's all you do. So when you hoop your fabric, and this is, and this is generally speaking what I do when I um, work on these woven fabrics, whether it's a napkin or a tablecloth or a, a, a denim jacket, um, anything like that, woven, press uh, or starch and press, and I repeat that maybe three good times uh, until it's nice and stiff. I hoop the um, fabric and then uh, and pull it taut all the way around um, make sure my hoops are flush with each other before I take it over to the machine I put it on the machine and before I start the machine I slide a piece of uh, tearaway um, all stitch sells the tearaway that I buy it's number 15 is all I really ever used if I ever need something a little heavier I'll just slide two two pieces of it, two layers of it under. Uh, that rarely ever happens. Um, 
my designs are not dense like that. So one piece is generally enough. If the fabric is just really flimsy, I don't remember if with this one I, I used two, uh, two layers or not. I may have used two because it's so gauzy. But what you can do with this too is if you, if you want to try it on this really thin gauze type of uh, towel, what you can do is um, add a piece of uh, uh, tool. Let me see if I did that to this. I can't remember. It's been a while now since I did this. I can't. Uh, I don't think I did. I just, I just did a quick test run to just see what would happen. But if you slide a piece of tool, the kind you make <clears throat> bridal veils out of, uh, they sell it by the roll too in the craft department of your uh, Walmart or, or everybody sells this stuff. If they sell fabric or um, craft supplies, they should have some of that in different colors. So you can just cut a piece. Uh, they'll sell it in four inch widths or five inches. Just slide a piece underneath uh, and then your tear away uh, or your tear away and then that. Either way, you can do it. Um, and that'll help support your um, your gauze too, your, um, if it's really flimsy. Or you can add it to the top. But I, you know, I didn't really want to be, I didn't know if it would show on top. I mean, I don't know if it would show on top. If you're using colors, like if you make this in a color, pretty color um, and you don't have the tool to match, just slide the white underneath and, and then you don't have to trim it so carefully. It's not going to show. And it's almost invisible. So uh, to this, I would add it to the bottom just so you don't have to worry about little edges showing or anything. You just trim around it freely and leave it alone. So it's just little tips. You don't have to do all that. It's just some thoughts on what you can do to support it a little bit more. Um, but the towels that I did use on the final product um, are the... Um, uh, 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 the premium uh, level of towel from cottoncreations.com and I used the uh, like I said the 22 inch by 28 or 22 by 29 you'll see um, but they also have a 20 uh, 28 I think by 36 which would be really kind of big but it might even work really well it's because then it gives you the length and a little bit more to wrap around your head. But this, the 22 by, by 28 would be perfect for little girls. I just keep thinking, oh man, I wish I'd had these when the granddaughters were smaller. And, but they're still small enough that I, I think they would love these. So I'm going to be making some of these for gifts for the girls. And, um, um, like I said, you can make them in all kinds of colors, you know? It'd be great for a bridal party or to have for the attendants. And it's just really nice little gifts. But these towels really do absorb. They're really very cool. I, I was using one of these to take care of those bunnies. I'd wash my hair and then I'd wrap my head. And, and before I designed this, I'd go outside and the first time I bent over to, you know, check on somebody, the towel would come off, you know, and I'd have to wrap it again. I'd be holding it, trying to, you know, take care of the bunnies. And um, I thought, I, every time I did that, it was like, I have got to design that towel I keep thinking about. And um, so anyway, this is what came of it. So there's that for those who are wondering about placement. Oh, and of course, you would find the center by folding the towel and of course this would be starched and stiff so you find the center by folding the towel in half and then you press it down with your fingers you know and then you know where the center is when you open it you'll know where to lay your hoop and you don't have to worry about crosshairs because you're just you're not centering it on crosshairs you're just hooping you know a certain distance from the edge and that's all there is to it so there's that. And speaking of 
how to mark your placement. I have this little uh, napkin that I just, like I said, this was impromptu and this was sitting on my ironing table because I recently pressed it and decided on something else instead. So I've got this pre-pressed napkin. So I didn't press the entire thing with starch. I just pressed the area that would be hooped. So I kind of go big usually. So this, this much is actually starched and stiff. So um, I think this is from Home Goods. I bought a set of, a couple of sets of these. <clears throat> They're cotton napkins, that's all. Nothing fancy. So I've got this area pressed and I was going to stitch something close to this edge right here. So what you do, what I do, and what you can do is you fold it in half because I want to know where my center is. And sometimes these napkins are not squared. It's really kind of annoying sometimes. So don't try to force it, okay? Just find a happy medium so that you can find the center, or you know, something close to center. So, see, for example, that's not exactly squared. So I'll just go with a happy medium here. This is actually straighter than a lot of the napkins I've been coming across. So, and then you just fold it finger press that area and then you have to decide what I normally do is I just I just don't like to float things if I don't have to which means if I put this too close to the edge I won't be able to hoop it so then I have to hoop a different kind of stabilizer and put spray adhesive on it and then lay my napkin down and then baste it down and I just mm, that's not my favorite thing to do because it's time consuming and I'm all about what's gonna save me time so what I do with something like this is I just do what I did with that towel I just will go ahead and open this up and I can see my fold so I'll just go ahead and place my hoop under it and my hoop even though it's wrapped I've got and this is so starting to look pretty sad and dingy I need to refresh my hoop so I apologize if you see all the dirt all my fingerprints uh, but when I wrap my hoops I also mark the centers because it's very important to know where the center of your hoop is so I mark it right here with a sharpie or with a pencil here and also here and here so that I always have my marks to go by. So I just place these north and south marks on my fold and then I just hoop close to the edge so that, and my hoop may be too tight for this one because I just hooped some gauze over there. So I'll loosen my hoop just a hair. And then, so when I hoop it, if it's a 4x4 four four design, okay, I'm not going to do it, because it'll take two, well, let me try one more time. Okay. Back to checking my fold. And I just want the edge just to stick up over the hoop here on the bottom, closest to me. And I just make sure it's still on the fold centered on the fold of the napkin so that now I can't see the fold anymore but it was definitely north and south true north and south according to my hoop marks and so then I go around and from the back pull gently every direction you can barely see it moving but you want to go all the way around and once you once you practice this a few times it'll be you know, you'll get it done in 30 seconds. But here's the thing, if the design is, um, if it's a four by four design and it fails the hoop, um, then I'll just stitch it just like, like it is right here. But if it's smaller than that, and I want it closer to the edge, I'll just move it, scoot it in the machine. Once I get it in the machine, I scoot it close to the edge of the hoop so it's even closer, um, yeah, closer to the edge of my napkin. And then, um, 
stitching that design close to the edge without having to float my napkin onto a piece of stabilizer and adding, you know, 10 more steps to that process. So that's what I do when I'm wanting to, when I don't want to um, float my project, is I just get it as close to the edge as I can. And I've gotten to the point where I can also do that with my um, uh, corners also. And it's a matter of knowing where the north and south is on your, this hoop isn't marked for that, but my other hoop is. I just found with, um, with my template, you can actually mark because the diagonal in your 4x4 four four hoop may not be exactly corner to corner. It may be off a little bit because this isn't a squared hoop. Some of your hoops may be squared. I, I don't know on the symbol needle machines. I don't know if they're actually squared. But if you find the diagonal on your hoop and mark it, then you can do exactly what I just did and just line up your fold with that diagonal and make sure the design is facing in the direction you want it to face. Um, and I'll do a demonstration on that at some point. But that is my hooping ticks, the uh, ticks. My hooping, <laughs> I'm gonna develop ticks, I think. <laughs> Too much stress, storms and hurricanes and, and bunnies and whatnot and pan, uh, pandemics and and uh, we've canceled our flight three times already to go visit our our granddaughters and have a photo shoot and it's like okay do I dare they're supposed to open up October 15th and, and with a proof of a negative COVID test we won't have to quarantine when we arrive starting on October 15th and it's like okay we've done this three times now that they're gonna open and then as soon as I buy a ticket, it's like, no, they've extended it another month and another month, three times. I'm not sure if I should, if it's foolish to believe it this time or just go for it. I think we're going to go for it and hope for the best. They've got to open at some point. I mean, that's got to happen. So anyway, I'm optimistic. Any questions? Anybody? How many people do we have here? Uh, we've had up to 55. Wow. 65. Sorry, All 65. All right. All right. And so how's everybody? Everybody, we need your likes and loves. Likes and loves. Hopefully we're getting some of those. Let us know you like or love and and or if you think something's funny. And, and this is my um, little cottage door backdrop, the cottage door that lives in my heart. Or my heart lives in a little cottage like this. So a lot of stuff I do is very fairy taleish, um, uh, with a fairy taleish roarish. Do you think that you can say all those words together? Um, uh, I've mentioned before I love fairy tales. I've loved fairy tales ever since I learned to read, and probably before I learned to read. Um, I just love looking through those old books, and, and I remember looking at pictures before I could read, um, uh, and just imagining what the stories were about. Or My dad used to tell me stories. He didn't read me books. He used to tell me stories, and I just loved hearing the stories um, that he used to tell me. And I don't remember all of them. I remember one, and it wasn't exactly a fairy tale, but in my mind, it was like, an old town and a little old man and and he told me stories like about the the, the sun and the was it the sun and the moon who had a wager whether they could make the man that what man walking take off his coat and or was it the wind and the sun something like that and you know uh, stories like that that uh, probably transcend all boundaries and everybody's heard them all over the world and and they used to tell me stories and I used to just love to hear them and I was always requesting him to tell me the, the same though I had a favorite one he used to tell me all the time and, but then I mean fairy tale books it's like and the ones with the black and white pictures the little black and white artwork and and little pictures like this you know at the bottom of the page and I remember reading about Briar Rose and Rose, or uh, Briar Rose and 
Briar. Oh, now I can't even remember. Um, what was it? The original story of Sleeping Beauty was really called, uh, I, I keep wanting to say Briar, Rose, and Rose Red. That's not right. But, uh -huh. Charlene says she's going to use your dragon design on her son's King Arthur costume. Oh my this gosh. Year, so. That will be cool. That will be cool. And some of the motifs go with that. The um, enchanted motif, I think. I have to come up with names, you know, for every design. So sometimes the names aren't very original, just because I, I can't make them too, you know, irrelevant. Yes. They didn't ask this, but you might uh, tell them about using terry cloth towels for your... Oh, right. Good, good wonder. Okay, so some people have asked about using terry cloth for these, for these hair wraps. And this um, eyelet is really, I call it an eyelet. Maybe it's like a little loop. It's, I think it's like three and a quarter inches. And the thicker your fabric gets, the tighter this will be. So my original thought was that maybe I could make something for the real light terry cloth that they sell. But then, you know what? You have to hem it and then do all this extra stitching. A lot of us, I mean, I sew. I sew, I was sewing before I, I did embroidery, machine embroidery, but a lot of machine embroidery uh, people don't sew. So I was trying to do something where um, once they did the design, they were done. You know, they didn't have to try and hem things and, and hard to hem fabrics. And, and uh, so that's why, and then, because I was already using these for my hair, I thought, well, these would work perfectly. So that's why I went with this. But um, the terry cloth, I was also trying to do something that was different from what's already, you know, the, the drugstores sell the little, you know, I don't know, are they $7.99 or $10 or something for the little terry cloth ones that are like a little hood, but you bring it down and twist it and there's a little elastic in the back. I wanted to do something a little bit different and less, you know, drugstore, uh, you know, crap, crafty homemade project. I wanted it to be a little more, uh, I know flower stack towels don't sound classy, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's unique and, and different and kind of special and organic, you know, it's not, uh, and they're cotton and you can even do it with linen. Linen would be beautiful. Um, so I didn't do something that, that was necessarily adaptable to terry cloth because, uh, to me it was like, you can already get those in the grocery store or in the, you know, uh, in Walgreens. Um, I wanted to do something a little different, a little more special that you could do that people could see it and think, oh, that is, you know, oh, I've seen those in the drugstore or, oh, I've never seen that before, you know, which is better. So I've never seen that before. That's really cool. I love that. That's absorbent and it's and it's flat, you know, and you can fold it or you can you can hang it. And by the way, if you wanted to make some kitchen towels, put this in the middle and use that for the loop. How's that sound? So, you know, that's why I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't too concerned about terry cloth because um, um, this is, I thought this was a little more um, special and unique and not something you can pick up at the drugstore. It's not that there's anything wrong with that, with using terry cloth, but I think it's too thick to pass through the loop, is uh, what I'm saying. So, um, there's that. Uh, were there any other questions, Faith, that had to do with, with the towels? Because Gary gets a lot of these questions on, uh, 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 as the, uh, customer support agent. So he gets a lot of questions that uh, I may not see. We've had a lot of people asking if you just did them on the flower sack towels because they were decorative or did we actually use them? Since I do a lot of the dishwashing and cleaning the bathrooms, we use them everywhere in our house. Everywhere. Yeah, and like I said, I love these gauzy ones just because they're pliable. And you know what's nice? 
when you wrap your hair in a bath towel, a cotton, you know, regular terry bath towel, you know how heavy that is? I don't know if the guys know how heavy that is. It's heavy. And you can barely move because you're trying to balance your towel and you bend down to, you know, put lotion on your legs or something and you're trying to hold on to your towel. This doesn't weigh anything and it stays on your head. That's like a problem solver to me. I just, with long hair and I don't like wet hair on my back and, and it's, and it's heavy to put it on my head and it doesn't stay if you leave it on too long, you know, more than five minutes, let's say, you're, you're already feeling like it's starting to fall off. I mean, I've caught myself many times trying to do something and I've got lotion on my hands and my towel is like, oh, and I can't catch it because I've got lotion on my hands and it's, you know, this, ladies, this is the answer to that. And I don't think you can make enough of these. I'm going to make some in all kinds of colors, and um, uh, my family may not be surprised when they receive them, but they'll still be happy, I think, because they maybe are listening to this. They're going to know they're going to get some for gifts. I'm going to be packing those, and um, I just, I, I need to order the 36 inch also. Say again yes. where you got those towels. The, these came from Sam's, the gauzy ones, and like I said, we love these. these I've even started putting these in the bathrooms for um, hand towels. Um, not, not the hair wraps, but the actual gauzy towels. Not, I'm not affiliated with Sam's Club. I'm just saying we really like these. Um, but um, the others, the more, the more um, tighter weave, that are very nice, it's almost like a high-end towel. Um, those come from cottoncreations.com, and it's the premium. And if you ask them, uh, you know, which towel Sonia Showalter ordered, you know, if you forget, uh, I think the girl's name is Heather. They, they can, they should be able to tell you which ones I ordered, because um, I've had some nice conversations with her. She's, they're very nice over there. And it, they're American made, they're pre-washed when you get them, they're, it, it's just, they're really nice towels. Uh, these, I don't know if they're pre-washed, but the um, cotton creation towels are pre-washed, they're even pressed, not, you know, pristinely pressed, but they've been pressed flat, and um, they embroider beautifully, so those really nice uh, linen looking towels that I've taken a lot of pictures of um, on our website. Uh, that look like really big towels. Those are the um, uh, flower sack premium. And um, I, I just found out the other day I used all of my 28, 29 ones. Now I just have a small stack of 28 by 22s left, which I think I'm going to turn into hair wraps, hair wrap towels. So um, I think that's um, about it for today's video, um, unless there are questions that I haven't seen, um, don't forget to click like and love and laugh or whatever. Hopefully we didn't make you cry or make you mad. So um, uh, I think that's about it. Um, we will try and have more videos um, or videos more often. It's been a while. We've had a lot of irons in the in the fire lately so we've got uh we get you know busy with so much stuff that the videos and setting up and all that it's like oh let's do it tomorrow oh let's do it next week and i've got a lot of ideas for videos and then it, the the hard the hard part is making it happen the easy part is coming up with ideas so uh, but we hope to to start bringing more videos and more often so that um, you know you can learn a little bit more about us and, and what we're doing here and show you some you know actual projects and demonstrate a few things well i hope you've enjoyed it and i will see you on facebook later this afternoon take care everyone stay